Imagine for a second a world where you have no roots to fall back on, no history to support your journey, or even a guide to follow. Would you be able to find answers on what you're looking for? The story we're going to tell you is about a man who actually did. Naoki Yamamoto was born and raised in Japan. After completing his basic education with flying colors, he got admitted into one of the most prestigious universities in Japan, the Doshisha University in Kyoto City. Doshisha was, at the time, primarily a Christian university. Hence, there was a lot of literature available on religion in the courses as well as the library. Combine that with Yamamoto's hunger for knowledge and you'll have found a Japanese student hunched over deep into the books until the wee hours of the morning. He studied the theory of Confucius, the theme behind Buddhism, the views of Taoism, and the roots of Christianity. Nestled in the books, Yamamoto found a small publication titled Introduction to God. He read it and found the concept of God, life, and hereafter quite interesting. But there wasn't a specific religion it talked about. This stopped him from researching more about the concept it articulated. Yamamoto could not put it down though, and it had such a strong pull towards him. He asked around and realized the author has written the book on Islam. He looked up Islam and read all about it. Coincidentally, he found out the author of the book he was reading was actually the wife of his professor at Toshisha. Subhanallah. Without sparing a second, Yamamoto sent an email to Professor Hassan stating his interest in Islam and requesting to meet with his wife to learn more about it. Professor Hassan was thrilled to receive the email and quickly asked Yamamoto to meet at the cafeteria. As soon as Professor Hassan saw Yamamoto, his student, he started crying. Tears flowed endlessly and Yamamoto found out his wife had actually passed a year earlier. Seeing his interest in Islam allowed the professor to remember a hadith. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, When a human being dies, all one's deeds cease, save three. A sadaqa jariya, religious knowledge one leaves behind from which others benefit, and a religious child who prays for one. Professor Hassan said, he saw his wife in Yamamoto's heart. He asked if he could mentor Yamamoto in Islam, and fortunately, it was a quick yes. From here on, Yamamoto began to understand the intricacies of Islam. Professor Hassan taught him the history of Islam, where it all began, the struggles of Muslims, and the pillar of tawakkul, trust in Allah's plan, and kept their iman steadfast. He even planned a trip to Malaysia, Indonesia, as well as Cairo, and took Yamamoto along so he could experience the culture of Muslims. In Cairo, Yamamoto took a small course of Arabic language and then met with a friend of Professor Hassan, who was also a professor. They talked about Islam, cleared up some confusions, and then the professor asked why Yamamoto doesn't become a Muslim. This struck Yamamoto as a divine call, and that was all it took for him to finally say the Shahada and officially become a Muslim. He did not take time to think how he would not be able to eat pork or drink alcohol because it just felt right to him. Subhanallah. Yamamoto said this was just an open door to the journey of his life, not a turning point or a dramatic switch, just a simple path towards the actual purpose of his being. When he started educating himself in Islam, he realized how all the books talked about Arabs, the Western society, and the African settlements. None of them spoke about the roots of East Asian Islam, and this erasure from history shocked Yamamoto. Where were Chinese emperors in the Tang Dynasty, the Ottoman wars in the Chinese literature on Islam? How could there be nothing? It just did not make sense. Yamamoto delved into the history of Islam in China, Japan, and Korea. He found out how Hong Wu, the founder of Ming Dynasty in an emperor in China, actually wrote a poem in 1398 CE for Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him to praise him. With Islam spreading throughout the East Asian subcontinent, Chinese Muslims started practicing the religion openly. This is how they invented Kung Fu. Yes, the very martial arts practice that Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan are famous for. Chinese Muslims practice Kung Fu to practice patience and control their desire, the nafs. 
This is why it is a series of slow but focused hand movements and requires no weapons. Hearing about all of this and more, Yamamoto decided to professionally study East Asian Islam and today he is a graduate professor at Marmara University, Turkey and specializes in Japanese culture and the Ottomans. May Allah bless brother Yamamoto infinitely. Amin.